I'm Monique Saltani. I'm a wine expert, a journalist, and I'm thirsty for life. This is Wino TV. Napa Valley is open for business, baby. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Where culture? There were a lot of rumors flying that all of Napa had burned down, and Napa has not burned down. And agriculture? There's nothing better than, than buying a bottle of Napa wine to support the fires out here. Come together. We are in a neighborhood in the Napa Valley known for producing world-class Cabernet. We are in the Stag Sleep District. What's on people's minds right now, I think, are a lot of images that they saw from the fires that happened here in October. There were a lot of rumors flying that all of Napa had burned down, and Napa has not burned down, so we really want to correct that and make sure that everybody knows we're open for business and the fires are out and it's back to rebuilding at this point. They see a couple of images on Facebook, but they don't realize like the small percentage of the wineries that were actually impacted. Obviously, it's a horrible thing that happened, but the number of wineries. Most of the wineries, the people I've talked to, uh, especially here in, in Stag's Leap, actually fared quite well. The vineyards, like you see behind us, actually protected quite a few of the wineries because they don't they don't burn. So it, it protected the fire from encroaching into the winery buildings for the most part. The vineyards themselves are irrigated, so they're, they're watered quite frequently. So they're green, growing. It's almost like a lawn, you know, wouldn't burn in front of a house typically. So it just protected it from, from not, not being as flammable. And Elizabeth, I saw your quote all over the place and I never saw an update. You said, I hope everything's okay. So we're here at Chimney Rock. Obviously everything is okay, but talk us through that night. Everything is okay. We were actually picking that night. We had to evacuate and we really didn't know whether everything was okay because they shut down the trail until the following Tuesday. Um, but when we got in on Tuesday, the building was intact, the vineyard was intact, and most of our neighbors were also intact. So it was quite a sigh of relief, as you can imagine. Yeah, in the 2017 vintage, I think I had read a stat somewhere that 90 to 95% of the grapes were already picked. That's absolutely true. And the wines are gorgeous. And, you know, you talk to any winemaker, they're always in love with the youngest baby. And let me tell you, That's the true, 2017 <laughs> is gorgeous. Um, a lot of extraction, a lot of color, um, great tannin, great structure. I think they're going to be gorgeous. Almost all the wines um, that we had were, were in tanks for many, actually even in barrel before this this fire event happened but for the most part it was an ideal season and and still is one so i'm excited about everything i'm tasting now i mean some of the some of the best wines that we've we've tasted at clodeval uh, are actually in barrel right now from 2017. something that people are asking me all the time it's like what can i do how can i help of course giving the gift of good wine is always a great way to give back but uh, now more than ever i want to talk a little bit about the 2014 appalachian collection if you purchase a collection 100 dollars will go to the napa valley community foundation and why is that significant? It's very specific so that you know that all your money is going to the relief effort here in Napa. Keeping the money local really is helpful to people that are here in the community. That's right. This is really ensuring that your money is going to help the people who survived the fires and need your help the most. There's nothing better than, than buying a bottle of Napa wine to support the fires out here. And this is a great uh, opportunity to do that and have 17 amazing Stag's Leap District wines. And then, you know, the thing that's really neat about this collection is Stag's Leap, to me, is one of the most uh, specific AVAs or viticulture areas in within Napa Valley, a subregion. And it's it's only 12 or 1300 acres of vines that are planted here. And so it's so specific and so special that I think it's uh, it's it's even more meaningful um, to have a collection like this that you can go through and taste the different winemakers that have made these 17 wines from essentially a really small patch of of the Napa Valley. You're getting 17 different wineries that have come together, 17 different winemakers for one Appalachian collection. This is the only collection like this. You'll find a unifying theme in all these Cabernets. They're like velvet in the glass, beautiful, beautiful textured wines. I mean, Stag's Leap District is really Cabernet heaven. This is one of the royalty AVAs for Cabernet in the world. Part of it is the geography. So if you look behind us, these amazing palisades actually trap heat during the day, which gives us really beautiful tan and ripeness. We're at the south end of the valley, so we get really nice cooling from the San Pablo Bay, which gives us beautiful acidity. So it's that combination of ripeness and acidity that makes really great, age-worthy, great textured Cabernet. Geography is very special here. Some wine regions are actually just sort of political boundaries, you know, between cities or counties or whatever, but this is actually a special little spot within Napa. And it's actually a valley within Napa Valley. It's really just a unique uh, terroir. This is Cabernet. Country. Really the best Cabernet that I've ever seen growing in Napa Valley. 
Uh, so it's it's unique, it's special, and it's it's a small small production. 2014, what a fantastic year! It is. It's the, one of three drought years. Really great concentration. Um, this is our 21st collection that we're releasing. We sell some of our top wines as a single collection, and it's released every October, only for sale for two months. So get in there. It's one of the best gifts out there. The Appalachian Collection is only available through our Stags Leap District Wine Growing Association. So it's um, it's not going to be available anywhere else. So go to stagsleapdistrict.com and you'll see a section of the website that has Appalachian Collection on it. Obviously another way you can support the community of Napa is to come on down here. There's a fantastic event coming up called the Vineyard to Vintner event. It's coming up in April. You actually can hobnob with the winemakers, hang out with Elizabeth, hang out with Ted, drink some wine and, and share some stories. It is one of the best parties in Napa. Um, basically you get behind the scenes access to all of the Stags Leap properties, meet the owners, meet the winemakers, taste barrel samples, and celebrate everything that's special about Stags Leap District. So we really want people to come support us. I imagine for you it's got to be pretty rewarding to be a winemaker and you work so hard and to see people come out and celebrate. Oh absolutely. I think it is a great event and one of the things that's actually kind of unique about it is at one of the elements would be a wine dinner where we actually have multiple wineries. So you have multiple, you know, three winemakers, four winemakers or more in the room um, talking about their wines at one dinner, which is really kind of special because usually it's focused on more like one one property. So it's it's a it's a fun event. It's a it's a great party, and it's uh, it's great to share with the the people. Yeah. Well, we made our way into the original barrel room here at Chimney Rock, where one of the events at the Vineyard to Vintner event is going to take place. You could literally wine and dine among the barrels and hobnob with uh, the industry folks. Elizabeth, tell us about the event that's coming up in this room. The first evening of Vineyard to Vintner is a set of four dinners at four different Stags Leap wineries hosted by winemakers with library wines. It's very small and intimate, only 50 people, and one of them will be hosted here this year. This is the time to, to talk to those vintners, the, the winemakers, the, the winery owners, things like that. And it's it's a great experience and a lot of fun. So it's, it's something that's unique and, and well worth attending. Saturday, we actually have open houses at every single winery. And a lot of us will pour barrel samples. We'll talk about our winemaking style. It's a real in-depth, behind-the-scenes event. That Sunday of this big event, you can actually preview the 2015s and get a sample of it. That's awesome. That's right. So the event finishes with this great lunch at Ragusi Winery and you can preview every single bottle and see if you're interested. And one thing I love to tell people when they're looking for a special gift, say they want to buy this entire Appalachian collection, all 17 bottles, maybe 2014 was a really meaningful year to them or to someone in their family, you can give it out as gifts and, and you can do that sort of thing. So there's all kinds of different reasons to give the gift of good wine, but right now I think the best reason is to support Napa Valley and California wine country. Here's to uh, surviving the Napa fires and coming back even stronger. I have to second that one. Um, I think it'll be more meaningful to taste these 2017 vintages years down the road and remember back uh, to, to what we all went through. But I think uh, we'll show in the end that we came came out strong. One of the things that I really noticed is um, watching the community come together in times of crisis. I was here covering the 2014 earthquake and everyone in the Napa community really came together and seeing um, the, the community come together yet again uh, in all of the North Bay and of course in Napa is really heartwarming. So I think we should do a cheers and a toast to Napa Strong. Napa